Let us be still as we draw near to worship God. Listen, God speaks through the world around us. May we see God's vision for the places in which we find ourselves and our part within God's purposes. The Lord says, See, I am making all things new. Welcome to our reflection today being recorded on a slightly breezy Thursday morning. Last week we looked at the changes that God can bring in people's lives and how that promises us a share in eternal life. This week we look at the wider community, how the whole of society and creation can be renewed according to God's promise and what are the foundations that we can lay on which God can build. Our opening prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, give us wisdom and faith to trust in you. When we cannot see your presence, when the way is full of darkness and doubt, increase our faith and help us to know that you will never leave us or forsake us, for you are always with us as creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. During this Easter season, when the church is following what's known as the lectionary, the cycle of readings for services, priority is given to Acts of the Apostles, which is a story of those first few years of the Christian community, and of course, a reading from the Gospels. But if you have three readings, or you want to choose from the other provision that's made, you'll find that the Book of Revelation features throughout the Easter season. And today we're focusing on chapter 21, which speaks of a new heaven and a new earth, an end to mourning and crying and pain. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water, as a gift from the spring of the water of life. A New Vision by Bernard Thorogood A new day of creation, God's blessed seventh day is surely coming. All is made fresh and bright, earth and sky shine. The city is laid like a great tapestry on the ground. God's city, with gleaming walls, has gates always open so all may go in freely. You cannot see a temple there, for prayers and praises fill every part. The city is a temple of the Spirit. People from every nation find it is a home for them and from the heart of the city flows the river of good water, living water, healing water, so no one need be thirsty ever again. Wonderful God, may we see this vision too and live this vision in the community of faith.
It's a little unseasonable, but these themes of new beginnings put me in mind of New Year's resolutions. I'm sure, like me, it's always the same list every year. To live a little bit more healthy, to take up a new activity, you know the sort of thing. We put them off. We'll wait till after the first week of the new year. We'll start in February. By the time we get to May, let's make it next year we do all that. New beginnings, but the same old list, year in, year out. I was reminded of new beginnings earlier this week on Tuesday, when it was the state opening of Parliament. It's the same pageantry every year, but this year there was a big change. Prince Charles was reading the Queen's speech because the Queen was not able to be there. If you didn't see it, it's worth watching on catch-up because I have to say Prince Charles reads that speech with what can only be described as a mix of incredulity and sarcasm. Of course, the Queen's speech is pretty much the same every year. It's written by whichever government is in power and it always has the same list of generalities. Economy. Security. That sort of thing. New beginnings. Same lists familiar territory. In the Gospel reading for today, Jesus is speaking both an end and a beginning. It's taken from a passage towards the end of his ministry, just before the events of Holy Week and the crucifixion and the resurrection. He speaks of what he's approaching, about being glorified. But he sets the disciples with a task. After he is gone, they are to start building the foundations for that new creation. And seemingly what they're being asked to do sounds so simple, but we know it is so difficult. Jesus tells them to love one another. Our Gospel reading presented by Phil Summers. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified with him. If God has been glorified with him, then God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Judeans, so I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you have learned from me. If you have love for each other, The new creation of which Revelation speaks is not just a new creation for individuals or groups of people. It's of the whole of society and of the whole of creation itself. But it can start with the most simple of actions in each and every one of us. In his second letter to the church at Corinth, Paul writes this. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Thank you for being part of this reflection this week. In the week that lies ahead, take care, stay safe, and remember that the best of all, God is with us.